Time to maintain the batteries. So we went with lead acid batteries, which many would say is old technology. We went with lead acid batteries for our off-grid solar setup for a couple different reasons. Number one, heck of a lot cheaper than the newfangled um, lithium, lithium ion jobs. Lithium ion? Yeah, lithium ion. A uh, lot cheaper than those. And also when you talk to off-grid technicians and electricians, by and large, the consensus is that those haven't actually been out long enough to be put to any kind of a longevity test with off-grid uh, setups. So our plan is to potentially upgrade to lithium ion batteries when these lead acid batteries uh, expire, which eventually battery banks do wear out, sadly. Um, but how quickly they wear out depends on how well you maintain them. A lot of people will tell you that investing in lead acid batteries is not a good investment because they don't last very long. Well, they don't last very long because they're not taken very good care of. So today I'm going to show you how I'm going to take care of our lead acid batteries. So these are the tools of the trade. We've got distilled water and any variety will do. You can pick it up at a drugstore or a local grocery store. I will tell you, I have noticed that our local drugstore tends to sell out of it really quickly because people use this stuff in their CPAP machines. So you may have better luck at a larger grocery store on that. And then I use a turkey baster. You can get a fancy pump to maintain your batteries, but you really don't have to. The key is to keep this thing really clean. So this is the turkey baster that I bought specifically for this purpose. I took it directly out of its packaging and put it into a brand new clean Ziploc bag. And that is where it's gonna live for the rest of its life when it's not being used. And that'll help keep any impurities out of the water when I put it inside the battery. So here's our battery bank. And each one of these has this cap each uh, battery bank functions a little bit differently. The ones I grew up with opened differently than these. And if you look in there, it's a little hard to see, but the water level has dropped since I purchased them and we hooked them up. And uh, when you're installing your batteries for the first time, I definitely recommend checking out where they're at when they're brand new so you have a basis of comparison. But basically what I am gonna do is take the water with my turkey baster and stick it right down in there until I bring the water level back up to the top, which is where it was when I put them in. Something to be aware of when you're maintaining your batteries is that each opening in the top of the battery leads to a different cell. They're not connected. So you have to fill each one. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put it on my calendar to check it every month. And uh, in the summertime, you're gonna wanna do that even more frequently because when it's hot, your water will evaporate um, more quickly. So back to the longevity question. The battery banks I had as a kid in a much smaller scale solar system than this is, lasted on average about 10 years. Now you throw that number at anyone who thinks they know that lead acid batteries don't last very long and they'll tell you that's impossible. But it isn't impossible if you take care of them. Take care of your stuff and you won't have to buy it twice. All done until next time.